Let's see what. Hey, guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to Bless Your Business. This is the program where we talk about how you bless the community, how you utilize your resources to bless your business and the business of others. Uh, this is the brainchild of my dear friend, Angie Aki, who is the co-hostess with the mostest. And today we have two special guests, Miriam Vargas and September, just September. Uh, <laughs> September are here and we're going to talk about Impact the Culture, uh, how they bless their community and how they grow their business by blessing other businesses, which is sort of the whole thought process here. So welcome, ladies. Welcome. Um, I'm excited to have you all here and I'm excited to be back, Angie. It's been a while, right? It has been a while. It's been quite a bit of time. Ted had a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, November was crazy, but we are back, and this is the perfect month for us to kick it back off. So, Angie, tell them a little bit about you and then kind of the impetus behind and the reason behind Bless Your Business. Absolutely. Thanks, Ted. Uh, so for those of you that don't know me, I am Angie Aki. I am the owner of and founder of Ohana Investment Partners and also Moxie and Money. Um, a lot of what I do in my business and in my life is working on rising up together as a community. I'm a big believer in the ripple effect. So the more we can all thrive together and pull each other up as we go, the more money we can all make collectively, the more money we make collectively, the more money we have to put back into our community and help others rise with us. So Bless Your Business is all about that. It's all about helping you bless your business and then in turn turning around and blessing other people in our community. So that's what Bless Your Business is about. And Ted has been awesome to work with. I know he has such a loving and giving heart. So this has been so great. And it allows us to share different um, share different opportunities to bless others in the community, and then also bring others on the show like we are today with Miriam and September so that we can let the light shine on them and what they're doing in case that's something you want to be a part of or if there's something we can do as a community to help contribute to something someone else already has the wheels in motion of. Perfect. You don't need me at all. Why do I come on these shows? That was so good. <laughs> Thank you, Angie. What a blessing. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't say I have moved. I have a new company. It's called Dart Bank. Um, and I wanted to let you all know that I am doing the same stuff that I would do. I'm just at a place that is much more community oriented for me. Um, and I'm super excited that uh, and because of Bless Your Business and things that I do, this opportunity arose. So you never know what's going to, the universe, God, whatever your belief system is, is going to bless you with, and you never know how or whom. So don't give up y'all. All right. So uh, without further ado, we have Miriam Vargas, Miriam, one name now, I like yes. it. And yes. September, one name. Yes. Um, they, uh, they are in business together. And what I'd love for you all to do, and we'll start with Miriam, is talk a little bit about who you are, um, and then what your business is. And then I want to take a deep dive into impact, uh, impact the culture, right? Impact your culture, impact the culture. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, I'm a little rusty. I've been on hiatus. Uh, so um, without further ado, Miriam, tell them a little bit about you. Sure. My name is Miriam Vargas. I come from a large Latino family. You know how we are We're all over the place. But for me personally, you know, the, the greatest gift I was given was from my mom and my dad. They came from another country and they decided, guys, you know, the American dream is to build something for our families. At that point, we were younger. We didn't really understand it. As things got deeper, we grew up. We started learning a little bit of what we have to do to protect not only our families, our friends, and help them to rise up because that is the key. When you have the tools in your hand, you need to bless others. You have to help others. So I had the wonderful opportunity with my son it's crazy. My son was my personal mentor in this business. And it's crazy for me because it, it, it was such a humbling opportunity, a moment, because I was able to learn from him because I never would have thought I could be in the financial industry. I worked in financial businesses. I did accounting. I did a little bit of everything. But I really did not understand the impact of how many families really don't know what to do with their finances. So probably about four years ago, um, 
a little bit longer, probably six, my cousin got stage four cancer. And at the age of 38, that completely impacted our family. Why? We weren't prepared. She wasn't in a position where she could help herself. Seven months of pain, no doctors would see her. I saw what not having the financial situation, not having the right tools in place and being prepared caused her. She lost her home. Both kids had to come out of college. And this is with a family that was giving as much as we could, but y'all know what stage four cancer, she ended up doing seven surgeries. So wow. for me, when I saw that and my son came up to me, I was like, mom, I want you to see this. It's about blessing families, teaching individuals how to be entrepreneurs, but in the same purpose, we're helping others. We don't know how to prepare for the future. We don't know how to build generational wealth. We don't know how to do the things because we're not taught, we're not prepared. So first and foremost, my biggest deal is the mentorship, the leadership, and helping others to reach a moment where they actually can breathe. We're seeing it right now, we can't breathe. Most people are struggling. So our responsibility and my goal is to help as many families to get to the next level, but also impacting others because my goal is let me push you up too. What are your businesses? Where can I help you grow? Who can I connect you with? Because this is all a business of connecting and helping us all rise. So that's just a little bit of myself and a little bit of what we do. I love it. And education is so important. And we'll talk a little bit about that. You all are very education oriented. September, tell us about you. Thank you, Miriam, for sharing yes. that, by the way. September, tell us about you. Of course. Well, thank you all for this amazing call for sure. For everyone that does not know me, I am September. I am the founder of Impact the Culture. My partner and I, she's currently not here. She's at work. But with me personally, of course, I come from a background where I grew up in an okay, you know, stable house in a way. You know, it's just my mom and I and my grandparents. But just growing up the way that I did, I've always been taught to go to school, go to college, you need this so you're able to succeed. And ideally, I thought that's what it was. So I went to school, I moved out at 16, I chose to put myself into a different school in a different field. So I'm able to have that career and that goal that I wanted for myself. I was going to be a chef, you know, not Gordon Ramsay yet, but I was going to be up there with them. And just seeing that so many people that had the degrees, the diplomas, all these things they had, and they're still in the predicament where they are the student debt, not being where they want to be. And even though they went to college and did everything that they were supposed to do, like we're always taught in the economy, they're still stuck. They're like, what do I do next? They can barely get jobs, can barely get careers. And it's just like, they're capped out. And I'm just like, well, I don't want to be where they are. I want more for myself. So I had to put my foot down at a young age. I had to, if you want to say, disappoint my family because they wanted me to go to college. They wanted me to do all these things to be the first in the family to go, to go to college, the first in the family to do so many things. I'm just like, you guys, there's so much more in life now that you don't have to keep doing the same thing. Why can't we be different? Why can't we show other people? You don't have to keep listening to society and the economy. Let's be different. So as much as I don't have as much support from them, it's okay because once I show them something different, they're going to be able to be like, okay, I want to be like September. I want to be going in those steps and the and those shoes, excuse me, rather than just doing what day to day the society tells you to do. So just being able to do that, I had to understand still young individual. A lot of people are not, you know, used to someone young, you know, saying all these things. But I had to learn that for you to be a voice in this economy, in this society, you have to have this. And if you don't have this, you can't be no voice. And just show, seeing how our communities are, we wanted to impact them. Impact them with the E means to empower we want to empower our communities because there's no one else doing it for us. So now we have to be the voice. We have to put our foot down because if we don't do it, who is? So for sure, just being able to be blessed. Of course, with my coach and mentor, Miriam, she's shown me so many things, so many light. She's like basically a mother hand to me. And just having her is a complete blessing. And just seeing where she's gone through her ups and downs and just seeing how she's always been by my side, no matter what happened. And she's always supporting me and encouraging me. September, keep going no matter what, no matter what family may be on your butt, giving you so much negativity, keep going, keep pushing. You're a young individual. A lot of young folks are not doing what you're doing. They're out partying, drinking, doing all these things. You're putting a name for yourself out there in the world. Keep pushing, keep moving. 
So just doing that, I love doing what I'm doing in financial services that don't come from this background. I was just a server, I did even busters, I have my own bakery, but just being in this atmosphere, the environment, the mentorship, you don't get that everywhere. These other jobs, they don't wanna see you do good things. So why keep being stuck with those type of people and being surrounded by toxic environments? Why not be around a good mentor that wants to see you grow, that wants to see you do better things, that wanna see you basically do better than what they're doing. And just seeing that here with this company that we're with, it says so many things. I think it's so important what you're saying because I, I want to go ahead, Angie. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Go ahead. Um, I, think, I think it's so important because right now there's a lot of disenchanted individuals who are saddled with a lot of debt from mm -hmm. college and maybe that wasn't the right path for them. And I feel like there's a movement among a lot of people your age, September-ish age, where they're, they're not accepting that norm anymore. And so they want to do more for their world, for their community. And they also don't want to be, um, I'm old, so I'll say it, they don't want to be beholden to the man is what we used to say. Or, right. you know, they, they don't want to have to have that nine to five, your $100,000 in student loan debt. Uh, working at a job that you're never, ever, ever happy at. And so you all are choosing and you're motivating other people to choose different ways to impact your world and the world around you. And so kudos to that. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted you on the show, because I feel like people get stuck in their business mm -hmm. and they think, well, I can't bless my business because I can barely pay my payroll and I can barely survive. Uh, and I'm struggling in this world. So the way that you all approach it, I feel like is very different. And you, I know you were going to say something too. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, to September's point, it's being careful and looking at who you're surrounding yourself with. I'm a huge proponent and that's such a huge part of Moxie and Money, which is a women's community. And it's a community that surrounds each other to rise together, right? To learn, grow and thrive together. You have to have the right people around you. Community is so critical. And, you know, Ted and I spend a lot of time together and we've connected at the Citrus Club and we've done all these things. And and so it, I have a huge intentionality around who I'm surrounding myself with and the community around me. So, you know, I just wanted to to echo that and to bring that point back up is your community and the people around you are so important. And if you are having a group that is negative and they're not cheering you on, you know, you have to be really careful as to who you're listening to. And are they just naysayers? Do they have any experience? Are they in a place that you want to be at? Because if not, you don't want to listen to them anyway. And making right. sure that you are, you are putting in your brain very, like very intentional things because I'm a big subconscious person too and mindset person, but your subconscious doesn't, it just acts, right? Whatever you tell it to do. So if you're feeding it junk, it's going to spit out and attract junk. You have to be Amen. very, very careful. So it's a community is such an important thing. And um, so I just wanted to, to bring that up and to echo what September said and I want to ask, so share a little bit about impact the culture. What is impact the culture? What does this mean? Tell me more. I don't know anything about it. For sure. Um, I, I'll even let Miriam put in a few cents too, along with impact the culture. But my partner, um, Latarsha, she is the one that created the name because she's seen where her family has come from. They were in poverty, still a little bit is. And she's just like, I don't want this for my family forever and always. I want to be able to change our last name and have a voice for us. So for her to do that, you know, it took a little bit of time creating, creating our name and everything. But we're in financial service. We're in the financial realm where we're able to help people grow and protect their money. Because that's the most important aspect, which is yourself and what you have around you. So just going more in depth to that, a lot of people, especially in school, you're not taught anything about finances. Even when you go to college for it, they still don't teach you enough. They teach you the bare minimum because they want to control you at all times. So we're able to help our families and our friends and everyone that's in our communities and our cultures because someone needs to sit down and talk about this. I've heard a lot of from a lot of individuals, which are mentors and coaches, that ideally when you're sitting down at the dining room table, you're taught to not talk about politics, your finances, or anything along those pages, which I've never heard of that. So when I heard of that, I'm just like, wow, that's so true. Because I don't want you to talk about these things, but you know what the wealthy people are talking about? Money. Oh, teach us not to. Money, 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 money. 
So just learning that I'm just like, this has to be stopped. This has yeah. to be in, interpreted in a different way. So yeah. impact the culture is not only to just impact yourself, but it's to impact your culture. Because every single culture, every single ethnicity, everything, no one's talking enough about it. So basically that's the what financial literacy is. So yeah. the financial literacy is lacking. You know, that yeah. we, we learn, we always joke that, um, you know, I learned how to play the recorder in elementary school. I wish I would have spent yeah. more time or trigonometry. I would, I wish I would have spent more time learning how to balance a checkbook, how to open a bank account. Uh, why, why find, why protecting your finances? Why vehicles like life insurance and investments are important and what they mean just so that I had a, people had a basic understanding. I don't know anything about calculus. I hated that class. Um, but, or stati now statistics is good, but I can do all of this on my calculator. Now right. I can't be taught these things and kids get out into the world and they have zero idea. They get their first paycheck and they have no idea why it's not their hourly rate times the number of hours they worked. I mean, it's, it's, it is the most frustrating thing. So and you all are doing this financial literacy and focusing on the education. And that is what I love. And I'm a, and I'm sorry, I'm buffering a little bit. I'm sure I'm a licensed life and health insurance agent. I've been doing it for 30 years. And so I understand the power of it and the power of not understanding it. It's terrible. So Miriam, uh, add your two cents to that because you do spend so much time mentoring and that's, impacting the culture that is blessing other people's businesses yes and i i love i was gonna piggy off of it, andy you know what you said is a thousand percent correct you know it's it's so difficult for individuals right now to say i don't want to listen to my mom right i don't want to listen to what my family is saying but are they financially in a place that you want to take that advice and majority of the times we have to be honest mom dad i love you but when it comes to finances, I don't want to listen to your advice because you're not where I want to be. So you're a thousand percent correct in stating, I would say the five to 10 people you surround yourself is your lid. That is your lid. That is why it's so important for us to be with individuals that are going to not only push us, but help us get to the next level because they have been there. They're there to help us to grow. So mentorship for me, helping the girls, impacting our culture, Guys, we're not prepared for anything. Families don't talk about anything. I had the honor and privilege bit because not only do I have this life insurance, just like yourself, the life insurance license for me has completely changed my life. But I also had clients that are wealthy and the conversations they're having with their kids. Guys, they're talking about money and finances from the ages of five, six, seven years old. We need to do that. I have two grandkids. I am already teaching them about money. I'm already starting to prepare them because if they don't understand the value and understand what to do and how to build your future, we're not gonna do anything. We're actually making our families dumber and our kids dumber. We cannot continue to do that. And yes, people are not gonna like it, but it's okay. We're not supposed to always go with the flow. You have to disrupt for things to come the way you really want them to come. And that's why for me, impacting the culture is so powerful. My, my team is generational wealth because we don't know what generational wealth. I want my last name to be the last name that not only empowers my family, but also helps empower thousands of family. One of my goals is to protect a thousand families. And that's just the beginning. Because by me doing that, I'm actually putting wealth in other families' homes. I'm actually preparing them to go to the next level. So for us, that's what's important, the mentorship, the growth. And I'm mentored. I have four coaches. I need them. They've got to get me all the time. They're like, Miriam, I'm like, okay, I need that. So right. yes, yes, 100%. I love it. And I, yeah, I, I think I, I'm a big fan. Everybody. I love how we just talk over each other and we it's, just get it's so like buffering. And I love, that's why I love a show that's live. Yeah. So yeah. To speak, uh, We're like, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, you know, one of the things I talk about all the time, I'm very <laughs> passionate about, about we have to normalize the conversation about money. We have to normalize it. And I challenge people within my moxie money community and with ohana investment partners too you should be talking about money every single day 
at least once a day with someone, whether it's your spouse, your girlfriend, your child. We talk in our family, we talk about money all the time. We talk about how much money I'm making, my husband's making. We talk about all of these things so that our son has an understanding of money and investments and what the return on investment is, how much time and effort is going into that, right? So it's return on time and return on investment. We talk about that all the time. So if you're listening to this, please, I challenge you, have a conversation about money. Every single day we're going into the new year. That would be a great thing to add to your list of goals for the new year. Talk about money every single day and see how that changes your perspective of money and what you attract to you because you have to appreciate it. You have to talk about it and it makes such a huge difference. Yes. You, know, you know, I was going to say it. It's so crazy. And, and I'll give this point. I was reading this month, my two books that I'm personally reading again, because I read it. I read it probably every three months because you need it is Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. Our, oh, my goodness. One of my favorite books. But I'm also talking about outwitting the devil. You know, have you got that the Nathaniel Hill? Uh, no, I got to write both down. What are they? Again? Oh, my God. Uh, the Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. Okay. And outwitting the devil, it's okay. got it's got a crazy. And I love listening to outwitting the devil on audiobook because it's it's crazy to hear how it speaks. But it's talking about what we're living right now. He wrote this book in the 1930s, and it is applicable now. We're living what they're talking about, and it's talking about the school systems, how we're not preparing our kids, how we're in, being controlled. It is unbelievable, but my job is to put it out there. Hey, I need you to read this book. I need you to read it right here. I need you to read, but it's us empowering ourselves, but we have to empower ourselves to help empower others because they also have to see us doing better. So I love what you and Ted do because you're helping us all rise up because they've got to see us scaling and get into the next level, but also showing them how they can scale and also rise with us. Yes. And that book is so, I, I've read both, but that the one, it's the same guy, I think, that did Think and Grow Rich. Yes. Yes. He's the author. It's just a different, but mm -hmm. it's a different, yes. wow, it's it's wild. I want to tell you, it's a wild book, but it is worth the read. Yes. All yes. right. So thank you for sharing that, Miriam. Thank you all for being on the show. It, it, I love this because the give back is what it's all about, the blessing other businesses. And I'm a big believer you plant the seeds, you bless other people, you're going to be blessed a hundredfold, a thousandfold. So I appreciate you all sharing your journey and your story. Angie, what's the best way they can find out more about you and reach you? Um, so I would say after this conversation, you can go to moxieandmoney.com. That is the, the community I have for female entrepreneurs. We actually have an event on December 12th, which is a goal planning think tank to help you rise and to help us all rise up. So please go to moxieandmoney.com and check that out. And hopefully you can join us. And Miriam in September, what's the best way we can reach you all? Well, I always say for me, Instagram or Facebook, I'm both on there as Miriam Vargas. Um, and Instagram, I'm Miriam Vargas 880. And um, just reach out to me at any point. You know, we're definitely accessible. And as much as I can help help you, that's what we're here to do. Of course. And for me, for sure, um, Impact the Culture does have an Instagram and a Facebook. So you can reach us on there or my personal social media, which is September NM30. And then I'm also on there, too. And I just want to be able to give value to whoever needs it. How can I bring value to what you currently have? Love it. And y'all can find me, of course, on Linktree or pretty much any social media platform. Uh, don't Google me. I have no idea what will come up. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. What a joy. You all, if you are interested in talking to any of them and you can't find them, please reach out to me. I will get you to them. This is what it's all about. Blessing each other and blessing each other's businesses and that ripple effect, which I love. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you soon. Thank Bye.